Can you imagine this? The takeout fried rice we usually order contains pig feed. The shelf life extends up to a whopping 12 months. Look at this egg fried rice. It's been sitting at room temperature for four days and it still doesn't have a sour taste. In fact, it smells pretty good. You can see each grain, there's no clumping at all. These pre-packaged egg fried rice dishes are sold frozen, and the key feature is that they don't need to be thawed. Just open it up, put it in the microwave or steamer or stir fry it, and it's ready to eat. This package contains one kilogram, which can make four to five servings of egg fried rice in a restaurant setting. Now, let's take a look at the ingredient list. The first two lines include rice, whole egg liquid, green peppers, vegetable oil, chicken, caramel color, pork bone flavoring seasoning, green peas, corn kernels, and so on. So far, there doesn't seem to be any problem with these ingredients. But then, there are two more lines of ingredients. There's a complex flavoring seasoning, which is the focus of technology and innovation. There are also complex moisture retaining agents and several types of them, labeled one, two, three. These are all high-tech additives. Now, here's the crucial part, complex coloring and flavoring agents. The first one is modified soy lecithin, and this is the most concerning. Let me explain to you that this modified soy lecithin provides essential nutrients and energy substances needed by organisms, and it's highly important for the growth and development of animals. It's considered an ideal nutritional supplement in feed production. Seeing this, is this food for humans? I'd like to ask this seller, would you give this kind of rice to your own family and kids? Recently, news of pig feed being added to fried rice has gone viral on various online platforms in China. Netizens were outraged, saying, we can tolerate using pre-made dishes for takeout, but feeding us pig feed is intolerable. This incident occurred in a small takeout restaurant in Nanjing. While they don't add pig feed to their fried rice, their cooking methods were likened to preparing food for pigs. After a concerned customer reported this, the restaurant was shut down. This shop is rather small, with no kitchen in the back and no dine-in option. After steaming the rice, they place it in this iron basin, add soy sauce and seasonings, and then stir it right on the floor with an iron spade. Their kitchen area is also quite dirty. This particular eatery has already been removed from the online delivery platforms. The hygiene conditions in many small takeout shops are indeed concerning. This delivery driver reveals the unsightly conditions of some popular takeout restaurants, causing people to lose their appetite. Let's show you just how dirty some takeout places can be. I've just delivered from one such place, and if you look at the monthly sales figures for these popular takeout shops, they can easily surpass 10,000 orders. I'm currently located in Zhengzhou, Henan province, and the conditions in some of these takeout places are genuinely worrisome. Take a look at this egg fried rice. It resembles pig feed, and even the chef's shovel has absorbed the flavors. The oil on the floor, you could probably use it to cook a few more dishes. Many of the food items are grabbed with bare hands, which is considered normal. Ingredients are randomly scattered on the floor. There's a thick layer of oil on the exhaust hood and the floor. When I went inside to pick up the order, the entire place felt sticky. The entire shop was filled with a foul odor. In such an environment, I don't know if you would eat there, but I can confidently say that they wouldn't eat at their restaurant. Based on my experience delivering food, fried chicken and fried rice are particularly problematic when it comes to hygiene. On October 30th, a delivery guy in Guangdong captured an infuriating scene at the meal pickup area where a woman wiped the noodles that had fallen on the table into the takeout box with a rag. Even more distressing is the situation of the students, often referred to as the nation's flowers. Students from this school claim that the school provided meals were so unappetizing that even pigs would refuse to eat them. This is tomato and egg soup, and this is soybean residue. Even pigs wouldn't eat this. The catering company selected by the school charges 10 yuan for one meal. Each class gets four buckets, one bucket of rice and three buckets of dishes. The dishes are all watery, resembling soup, which is quite gross. After the incident was exposed, the school's principal explained that it was the first time the chef prepared a gai fan and didn't know the right proportions of ingredients. However, students couldn't help but wonder, if pigs won't eat this, would the principal? Interestingly, pigs might actually not want to eat such food. A lady promoting pig feed mentioned that modern pig feed is made from high-quality ingredients with high nutritional value, even suitable for human consumption. If it weren't for Mr. Liu from Hertuang Feed promoting it, I wouldn't have known that animal feed can be consumed by humans. When the salespeople are working and when they get hungry at lunchtime, they simply mix a cup of pig feed and drink it to satisfy their hunger. In reality, the feed they use now is made from high nutrition ingredients and its nutritional value is very high. Why do pigs nowadays grow so fast? Let me enlighten you. It's because the nutritional value of pig feed is extremely high. Although she praised pig feed, it's doubtful she would eat it herself.
Another lady offers a direct suggestion. Pigs eat feed. We eat pigs. It's too much trouble. Let's just eat the feed directly. Now let's return to the story of the fried rice. In February of this year, a customer in Lu Shan Sichuan ordered fried rice at a restaurant. After taking a few bites, they discovered some small, dark, pellet-like objects that resembled mouse droppings and showed them to the restaurant owner. Surprisingly, the owner insisted it was just overcooked rice. To prove her innocence, she even ate those suspicious pellets. This is the taste of overcooked rice. It's crispy, with a slightly bitter taste. This owner's dedication to defending her business is truly remarkable. You can't help but wonder if she'll find a place to spit it out afterwards, or if she'll carry psychological trauma from this incident. After all, it was indeed mouse droppings. Another delivery driver witnessed a restaurant owner preparing takeout using pre-made dishes, which was quite disturbing to watch. Others order from your takeout because they're lazy, but it turns out you're even lazier. They pay over 20 yuan for what's essentially a few dollars worth of ingredients. Isn't that outrageous? What's it to you? Why are you getting involved? Look at this, one scoop, one cut, and it's ready in five seconds. If customers knew these were pre-made dishes, why wouldn't they just order them online? Why bother with takeout? Let me ask you, do you eat these dishes yourself? Why do you care if I eat it or not? You don't eat them yourself, but you have others eat them every day. Friends, take a look. Does food cooked like this with plastic look particularly appetizing to you? You order this kind of takeout every day and they still sell three to four hundred servings daily. Meanwhile, those who go to the market to buy fresh ingredients and cook on the spot end up losing money and closing their doors. It seems that if you want to make money, you have to throw your conscience away. In China today, it's widely known that many takeout meals are made using pre-made dishes. Pre-made dishes have become a pillar industry in many regions, heavily supported by the Chinese Communist Party. There are also experts collaborating with CCP propaganda to vigorously promote pre-made dishes. However, for some people, pre-made dishes are akin to pig feed. Last year, Wang Zhigang, the co-founder of China's Zhigang think tank, stated in an interview, do you know what pre-made dishes are? They're like semi-finished products, right? I never eat them. That's food fit for pigs and dogs. Wang Zhigong's statement that pre-made dishes are like pig feed caused a huge uproar, quickly trending on Weibo. However, because it touched on the interests of too many people and was displeasing to the authorities, it faced strong criticism from state media, accusing him of bias against pre-made dishes. Eventually, his studio had to issue a statement saying, Wang Zhigong's remarks are his personal opinion as a food lover and do not target any specific industry or individual. Let's take a look at how netizens commented on pre-made dishes. Saying that pre-made dishes are fit for pigs and dogs is simply nonsense. It's not even fit for pigs and dogs. Let's take a look at the ingredient list for dog food. Its main ingredients include beef, beef liver, and additionals like inulin, seaweed, minerals, and vitamins. These main components include proteins, vitamins, probiotics, and amino acids. Importantly, it doesn't contain additives, hormones, or artificial flavors. Look at this ingredients list. Isn't it much cleaner than what we eat? Could it be that dogs have more sensitive senses of smell and they can detect artificial flavors and additives so they don't eat them? Humans don't have such a sensitive sense of smell, so do we just have to accept additives in our food? Moreover, many dog foods contain dried vegetables, dried chicken and fish and have absolutely no additives. This truly illustrates that dogs eat better than us. People constantly promote not eating leftover food, claiming that even if it's stored in a fridge, harmful substances can form. So how long has it been since these pre-made dishes were prepared? Could their storage method also produce harmful substances? Or have they used some high-tech method to make them both safe and fresh? While the CCP promotes pre-made dishes, it also extended its reach to schools. Recently, many places aggressively promoted pre-made dishes in primary and secondary schools, facing resistance from parents. Due to the unpalatability of some schools' pre-made dishes, which were even worse than pig feed, many children refused to eat them. Helpless parents had to deliver meals to the school every day. I said pre-made dishes are fit for pigs and dogs, but you're saying they are acceptable. It's simple to prove this. First, let your experts eat them, as well as your relatives and children, without leaving anyone out. Let them eat these dishes for a year or even half a year. Isn't this more convincing than posting videos every day promoting their benefits? You all claim that eating leftover food can cause cancer, and these are pre-made dishes that are left for days, weeks, or even longer. 
Can you say there's no foul play here? This is a school, it's the future of our nation. Have you extended your reach too far? The key is that these children don't have a choice, which is a bit too much, don't you think? I don't know what kind of evil people can do such morally reprehensible things. Besides using pre-made dishes, many restaurants, to save costs, purchase faux meat products made using high-tech methods to deceive consumers. Beef, being relatively expensive, has become common for counterfeiting. There are even specific products in the market that are made from ingredients like duck or pork meat mixed with various flavorings. This can also be considered a form of pre-made dish, as the ingredients are pre-mixed without being fully cooked. This chef, who once worked in a restaurant, reveals how to make fake black pepper beef. Today, we're revealing a secret about the food industry. Some unscrupulous businesses like to use impersonated authentic beef tenderloin. This thing is called black pepper beef, or no, it's black pepper filet. It seems the businesses are avoiding accusations of fraud by not explicitly stating it's beef. This thing is essentially processed meat with a list of ingredients. The ingredients include duck meat, some moisture retaining agents, bulking agents, and some flavorings. This thing already has a strong black pepper flavor. So, some shady businesses use this processed duck meat and pair it with beef flavor paste to pass it off as authentic beef tenderloin. Today, I'll demonstrate their preparation process for all of you so you'll know how to distinguish it when you encounter it. Now we take some duck meat and put it in a bowl, then add some beef flavor paste. Be careful not to add too much, this is quite concentrated. Now, let's mix it evenly, then add some cornstarch and continue stirring. Now, heat some oil in a pan until it's about 50% hot, then toss the duck meat in for a quick fry. Once the duck meat is cooked, take it out and set it aside. Next, add some shredded green and red bell peppers, then add chicken essence, some MSG, black pepper sauce, and a small amount of light soy sauce. Stir fry for a bit and it's ready to serve. Friends, a plate of beef flavored duck meat is now done. To be honest, this duck meat imitation of beef has about 70 to 80% similarity with real beef. Most people won't tell the difference, but experts like us can still spot it. Real beef will have a firmer texture when cooked, whereas this imitation turns out fluffy and incredibly tender. Ma la tang is a popular street food, and here's a high-tech method of making it. However, you might not want to try it anymore after seeing this. Do you think all the broths are made from boiling bones? You're mistaken, my friends. Today, I'll reveal the high-tech process of some unscrupulous businesses making hot pot broth. First, heat some water in a pot, and after it boils, add some powdered milk to create a white broth. Some particularly unscrupulous businesses might use expired powdered milk, which doesn't cost them anything. Alright, now the broth is snow white. Next, add a piece of compressed spicy hot pot base and let it simmer briefly to dissolve. Then, add some hot pot base enhancer for fragrance and freshness, which contains disodium inosinate and ethyl maltol. Next, some unscrupulous businesses might add a bit of chili extract to enhance spiciness. Then, there's Sichuan pepper extract to add a numbing sensation. Using these extracts costs about two-thirds less than using natural chili and Sichuan pepper segments. The broth is ready. Add various frozen technology meatballs and sausages into the pot to cook. These meatballs and sausages are overly flavored, I can't even eat them. Alright, now add some lettuce and it's ready to serve. Friends, this method is delicious, but it involves using flavor enhancers, flavoring powders, and additives like artificial flavors. If scrupulous businesses accidentally use too much of these ingredients, could it be harmful to our health? I urge businesses not to rely on this high-tech approach. Use real ingredients and your business will thrive. After the impact of pre-made dishes and such unscrupulous businesses, many restaurants that use fresh ingredients and operate legitimately struggle to make a profit. Additionally, after the end of the pandemic this year, instead of experiencing the expected surge in consumer spending, they faced a wave of new restaurant openings. Fierce competition among peers has pushed this restaurant owner to the brink. Do not open a restaurant, not this year. Don't open any kind of restaurant, because it's tough. How tough is it? It's so tough that it's challenging even from experienced operators. Many new restaurants have opened, and now there's a surplus of them. 
Not only are new restaurants struggling to attract customers, but even older ones are losing business because of the competition. The supply is high, but the demand is low. Take rice with stewed chicken leg, for example. It's sold for less than 15 yuan on May 20, even 14 yuan. After deducting the cost of the container and rice, there's not much profit left. To be honest, this price can cover rent and utilities, but if you want to make a substantial profit, you shouldn't even think about it. Over decades of CCP rule in China, the social morality of the country has been systematically and comprehensively eroded. The CCP has continuously brainwashed the population with its core culture of fake, evil struggle. It criticizes traditional Chinese values that emphasize respect for heaven, harmony, and kindness while promoting its twisted ideology. In just a few decades, Chinese society has transitioned from a renowned land of civilization and courtesy to its current state, with rampant gambling, drugs, organized crime, counterfeit goods, and pervasive corruption. The CCP's goal is to corrupt people's morality. Only when people's hearts are corrupted and there is no moral boundaries or standards can they accept anything the CCP does, no matter how heinous. Therefore, under the leadership of the CCP, it's no surprise that China has seen so many unscrupulous businesses adding pig feed to food, producing dishes even worse than pig feed, and all of this seems almost normal and acceptable to many. This is a result of the moral degradation instilled by the CCP.